right, today we're going to go over everything for um, making the Duncan Messenger Sling Bag. This bag is the March 2023 contribution to Bag of the Month Club. So this is the advanced skill pattern. Um, first, I would like to discuss printing the pattern pieces so that they print correctly. Um, you will download the pattern from your account, save it to your computer, close your internet browser, and then open the pattern using Adobe Acrobat Reader. Um, this is important because if you open the pattern while the internet browser is still open, it can open in the internet browser and it will not print correctly. Um, so once you've done that and you open it, if you want to print the pattern piece pages only, which would be all of these pieces of the pattern pieces, all of these pages of the pattern pieces, then you will print pages 22 to 30. Um, I'm popping up on the screen the settings for printing correctly. And you will make sure your setting is at actual size or 100% portrait, and then choose the correct pages. Once you've printed that, you will want to go to the pattern pieces and use a ruler to measure the test square. It should me measure exactly one inch. If it's off at all, all of your pattern pieces are probably incorrect. Even if it's only off by a little bit, the scale can be different on each page. So every page has its own test square and you'll want to confirm that they all measure correctly. Um, so let's discuss the supplies a little bit and then we'll discuss how to cut the pattern pieces out. All right, so this pattern is calling for a heavy fabric for the exterior. So the exterior that I'm using, this is a water resistant canvas. Um, so it's thick, it does not have like a plastic backing though. There, you could use a regular cotton canvas, something that's a heavier material, denim would work, um, something that does not probably need to be interfaced. If you want to use cotton fabric, you can do that. And you would just use to it a layer of woven interfacing like Shape Flex from Pellon. Um, many companies have their own um, brand of woven interfacing out now. So my lining, I'm using a water res or waterproof canvas. So this is the right side and the back side is covered with like a plasticky coating. Um, and I use waterproof canvas for linings in most of my bags. Um, and then for the accent fabric, the exterior contrast, I'm using a vinyl and you just want this to be any non-fraying fabric. Once you cut these pieces out of vinyl, you can go ahead and put edge coating on them if you want. Um, a lot of them are sewn directly onto the fabric, so I would edge coat them before you sew it instead of after. Okay, so now let's discuss zipper tape. So there's zipper by the yard, which you buy like this. Um, several shops sell that. If you choose to use regular zippers, um, they will be probably cut down in order to be the right size that's listed in the pattern. Like for example, the main zipper is 21 inches long and that would be the whole entire length of the zipper tape where if you buy your zippers already cut in pieces, it would be a 20 inch zipper because there would be half an inch at each end that did not have the zipper teeth. And when you use zipper by the yard, you will have zipper pulls. So this is number five zipper tape, number five zipper pull. They need to be the right pull for the right type of zipper. And to install that, you just separate the ends a little bit. I look inside the end to see that the teeth match up how they should and then just pull the pull onto the zipper tape like that. If it's off a little bit, like you can see that this is, you have a bump on one side, take it off and try again. Um, and then we use seat belt webbing. You can use cotton webbing if that's what you prefer. Seat belt webbing is very strong plus thin. Um, and I just really like it. A lot of the smaller shops have seatbelt webbing available now. 
when you cut seat belt webbing, it's very important. You'll want to use a lighter to melt the ends of the nylon. Um, otherwise it will unravel. And when it's sewn into your bag, the ends will unravel and eventually they will pull, the strap will pull out of your project. All right, so let's discuss cutting out. All right, so when you print my pattern pieces out, several of them will have letters on them like this. That means it needs to be matched up to another pattern piece um, to be complete. I cut all of the pattern pieces out before I tape anything together. And I just cut out directly on the line. like that. Um, for some of these that have longer straight edges, you may find it easier to use um, a rotary cutter and ruler. And then I just line it up right along the line, make sure it's straight. And I just use my rotary cutter. Um, I do use a different rotary cutter for cutting paper than what I use for fabric because cutting paper will dull your blade. And then I use scissors though to cut around anything that has a curve. It's helpful to move Keep your scissors straight and you move the what you're cutting. All right, so I'm going to cut out all of the pattern pieces and then I will come back to show you how to tape them together. All right, so all of the pattern pieces are cut out. So right now I've separated them into um, pieces that don't need taped together and pieces that do need taped together. So what you'll do is find the two pieces that have matching letters. So this is A, so find the other piece that has an A. And I like to use pretty washi tape for this. I just, first I tape one of the pieces and then I flip it over. This is just how I find it to be easiest. I set something on it so it can't move. And then I butt the other piece up to it so the letters are matching. Hold the tape to the back and then you can also put a piece of tape across the back if you choose so it's taped very well all right so there's one whole piece so i just go through and tape all of these i like to print page two of the pattern and it has lists from the exterior fabric from the contrast fabric lining fabric fusible fleece seat belt webbing so that way I can go right down the list and cut everything out and check it off as I cut. Um, if you use a pencil or erasable pen on this, um, then you can check it off and reuse the, the sheet. So let me get everything out of the way. We're not going to cut everything on camera, but I will show you how I cut. All right, so exterior fabric. Most of the pieces will be cut on fold, but all of them are not. Make sure you pay attention to whether the pieces you're cutting should be cut on the fold or not cut on the fold. If you don't prefer to cut on the fold, you can print two pieces, two pattern pieces of all of the cut on fold pieces and tape them together and then you can not cut on the fold. Here. 
All right, so the first piece to cut on fold is two main panels. So I fold my fabric so that I have the least amount of waste possible. I line up the portion that is marked fold along the fold. Um, you can use clips. Um, I have these clips, which are actually like a hair clip from warmino.com, and they work excellent for clipping your pattern piece to the fabric and holding in place on the fold. All right, and then you can take your scissors if you choose and cut around this. Um, I like to just use rotary cutters. So just keep your fingers out of the way. And then I just take my rotary cutter and carefully cut around the, the pattern piece. Um, what I used to do, and I don't anymore, just because I'm not making a lot of the bags multiple times, is that I will print on cardstock just like a cheaper quality cardstock, and then it's easier to trace around the pattern piece with a rotary cutter. Key to this is just that I take my time. All right, and then there's one main panel. Um, you will notice that on some of the pattern pieces, they'll have lines, so here, we cut these pieces on the main pan uh, for the main panel, which is the whole pattern piece. And then there's interior slip pocket, which will fold this pattern piece at the dash line. And then we'll cut two of those out of the lining. So there are a couple pieces like that. Um, the main panel and the front pocket main. So you'll want to make sure that you cut certain pieces out of the whole piece and then certain pieces out of um, the piece folded down at the dash line. Um, I do have listed on page two, there are measurements also for any of the pieces that are rectangular. So for instance, the main gusset top, if you don't want to put this on the fold and cut it, you can also measure it and cut it out like that. Um, I like to use rulers such as these for cutting rectangle pieces. Um, also, if you choose, you can trace the pattern pieces onto the back of the fabric and then cut it out with scissors. So several different ways for that to be done. You can pin your pattern piece onto the fabric and cut it out. Um, let me show how I cut the vinyl pieces. Alright, so the wrong side of the vinyl up, and I will take a pattern piece that is cut out, cut out of the vinyl, and some type of marking pen that will mark on this. Um, actually, I think I'll use chalk. Um, so I just have a Dritz chalk pencil. It has an eraser. Make sure that the vinyl doesn't have salv salvage on the other side. And then I just trace around these pattern pieces. You could also probably use like a temporary adhesive or something to hold the paper in place and then cut around it. I always just trace mine. All right, and then because of the shape of this, I'm going to, it has uh, the rounded corners. I'm going to use a ruler, cut the straight edges, and then I'll just cut the rounded corners off. So I'll just line my ruler up with the straight edge. 
cut that, line my ruler up with the other straight edge, and I cut just inside of the lines I marked since I traced around the outside edge um, of the pattern piece. And then if you also need the pattern piece to guide you to cut the curves, um, oops, you can place the pattern piece on and cut the corners. This can also be done on a Cricut or a Silhouette if you have such a, if you have a cutting machine, uh, Brother Skin and Cut, I believe is the other one. So I do think I will create... SVGs just for the vinyl pieces. All right, so you cut it out just like that. And then what I would do at this point before sewing, take leather edge paint and coat the edges of your vinyl. Um, that's totally optional. You do not have to do that, but it will give your bag a more finished look. So I'm going to go ahead and get everything else cut out. As I cut, I'll place a check mark next to each item on the list, and then that way I know I cut everything. So edge coat is totally optional, but if you want to use it, I would recommend for this pattern, putting it on the pieces prior to um, sewing, since so many of the pattern pieces are sewn onto the fabric. Um, so most edge coat brands will have a base coat, top coat, and then the color coats. This base coat is from Mojo Sews. Um, and I will link all of my supplies in the comments like normal. but it helps to use a base coat first, and this is completely optional. Also, if your vinyl has a lot of little fuzzies, um, then you might want to carefully, very carefully use a lighter to just singe the fuzzies off. So what I'll do is just go along the raw edges of each of the vinyl pieces with the base coat first and then we'll come back and we'll add a color layer. Alright, so let's get started sewing. We are going to take the exterior flat front main, place it right side up, and then take our 6.5 inch zipper and place it right side down, matching it to the left edge. You'll want to either pin that in place or use sewing clips to hold it in place. Um, I already have the zipper foot on my sewing machine for this step. If you have, my last machine was a Juki 8700. Um, on that machine I have a narrow zipper foot and I just use that for everything. If you need to switch out to a zipper foot, I would suggest that. Um, if the seam allowances are not correct on this part, some of it, well, I guess you could trim the pieces, but some of it won't fit correctly. Um, so we're going to base the zipper in place using a quarter inch seam allowance. As you get to the zipper pull, if you need to move that out of the way, go ahead and do that with your needle in the down position. I 
I'm using a stitch length of four for my sewing and a stitch length of five millimeter for top stitching. All right, now we're going to take a lining flat front main and place it right sides together with the exterior and the zipper is sandwiched in between. All right, now we're going to sew this in place using a 3 8 inch seam allowance. This is for number five zipper tape, which is one and one quarter inch wide. All right, now we're going to take these two pieces and flip them so that they're wrong sides together and press well along the seam. Go ahead and top stitch along the zipper using a 1 8 inch seam allowance. And again, I use a stitch length of five for top stitching. Now we want to take the exterior flap front side, which is this piece, and we're going to place it right side down on top of the zipper. Go ahead and clip that in place. And then we're going to baste it down. Um, using a quarter inch seam allowance. All right, and then we're going to take the remaining lining flap front main and place it right sides together with the other lining flap front main that's already attached. And we're going to match it up at this end of the zipper where the flap front side is sewn. And we're going to go ahead and sew that in place using a 3 8 inch seam allowance.
And I just slide the zipper out of the way as I go. Always with my needle in the down position. All right, now you'll wanna go ahead and press the flat front side away from the zipper. And we're going to top stitch using um, an eighth of an inch seam allowance again. You could also, if you're using zipper tape, you can wait to slide your zipper pulls on until after you've sewn the zipper in, and then you don't have to worry about mo moving the zipper pull out of the way as you go. All right, so now we're going to fold the exterior flap front main back. We are going to trim the longer of the two lining flap front main so that it is the same size as the, the shorter one. Go ahead and place a few clips. And we're going to sew that together using a quarter inch seam allowance. And I am going to go ahead and switch back to my regular presser foot throughout. So I'm either using, I think it's called the right um, zipper foot, or my regular presser foot, which has the little walking foot on each side. Um, so I prob probably won't stop to explain when I switch it out each time, because I will just cut this part out of the video. All right, now we're going to take the exterior flap front top and clip it in place to the top of this piece. And I am catching the zipper pocket, the lining panels. I'm going to also sew through those. And then the flap front bottom piece, we'll go ahead and line up also.
and then we're going to sew both of these in place using a one half inch seam allowance. Um, make sure as you sew that you check the seam allowance throughout the pattern because it does change. As you can see when I cut my pieces out I did label some of them on the back if they were rectangular and similar in size to another piece Just so I did not have to recheck or I didn't accidentally use the wrong piece for the wrong section. to press both of these away from the center portion. Um, I'm probably going to do a lot of finger pressing because this doesn't seem to hold a crease well. And then we're going to top stitch this using an eighth of an inch seam allowance. So as you'll notice, if I don't iron, um, I continuously pull the pieces away from each other as I top stitch to make sure that my seams lay nice and flat. So our entire flap front is assembled now. We will go ahead and take the exterior flap back and place it right sides together with the assembled flap front. And we're just going to use clips or pins to pin this together or to hold the two pieces together. I prefer to use sewing clips for everything. I get these glitter clips from mormino.com. Um, you can use, there are sewing clips everywhere. Um, Amazon, I think Dritz, no, it's Clover. Clover is the brand that is available at Joanne Fabric. Alright, and if any of your seam allowance were, allowances were a little bit too big around the pocket, you'll notice that the back piece is just a little bit wider. And I'm just going to line it up as such so that we use the back piece for the main template and the rest will get kind of uh, taken up in the seam allowance. And this also doesn't lay exactly flat because of the, zip, the zipper being in there. All right, and the only thing here is that we wanna make sure we keep a turning hole along the top edge. So, 
we're going to start sewing around where this clip is and we'll end, end the sewing around here so that we leave at least a five inch gap in the center for turning right side out. Um, you can also go ahead and take a pen. A pen that works would be helpful. And you can measure if you want to, to make sure that you have about a five inch gap. Um, it doesn't have to be exactly five inches, but you wanna leave it so it's big enough to turn right side out. And then we're going to sew this together using a one half inch seam allowance. Make sure that you back stitch well at the start and stop here since you're turning it right side out through that hole and you don't want to rip your stitches out. Here I stop with my needle in the down position and rotate to see if I'm at one half inch seam allowance at the next part. If I'm not yet, then I turn it back and do another stitch and then check again. Same thing here. All right, we're going to trim the seam allowance down at the corners. Do not trim through your stitching. And you can trim more of the seam allowance off if you choose to reduce bulk in the seams. All right, and then I'm just going to flip this right side out through the hole that we left. helpful here to use a stick of some sort. Um, chopsticks work well. I have a stick that came with a package of um, batting for filling like stuffed animals and I use that. Or if you had a, I have a tube turning kit from Joanne Fabrics and I use the wooden sticks from that. And then you'll also take the seam allowance along the opening and turn it inside by one half inch. And then just go ahead and press this really well. All right, so this is pressed nice and flat. We're not going to sew this turning hole closed at this point. Um, it will be caught in, in the stitching when we attach it to the bag. So if you want to, you can take a piece of the double-sided tape. This is one eighth of an inch wide and I get it from Wizardry Stitchery. Um, I also saw that two minutes to stitch has eighth inch wide. They also sell the hardware kits. Um, unfortunately, I don't know for sure where at, where's the best place to buy this outside of the United States. 
Um, I believe Wawak also has some. So I'm going to just press that down so my turning hole stays closed nicely. And now I'm going to go ahead and top stitch all the way around this. Well, from here back around to here, leaving the top edge unsewn using a 1 8 inch seam allowance. for the sirens. I do live near the hospital. All right, our front flap is complete. So we'll go ahead and set that aside for now. We're going to take the exterior front slip pocket, place that right sides up, and we're going to measure one and three quarters of an inch from the bottom straight edge. And you'll want to use a marking tool for this that is erasable. So I have a Dritz chalk pencil that I use. So one and three quarters of an inch. And then I'm just going to draw a line. And then we have our um, front pocket accent strip and I'm going to use some of my tape on the back of this. Um, you could also use fabric glue but you have the added component of waiting for it to dry in between steps. Um, I have also used Elmer's glue stick. Like just washable school glue. Alright, so we're going to place this directly up along the top of that line. some of my edge paint. All right, now I'm going to top stitch along both sides of this using an eighth of an inch seam allowance.
All right, now we're going to measure two and a half inches in from each end and make a mark. that is in the center of this one inch strip. Um, all of the rulers that I'm using are from Mormino.com. All right, I'm going to take the washers for the magnetic snaps, center them over the mark that I just made, and mark the prong placement. All right, now carefully you'll want to snip into this prong placement using a seam ripper or an X-Acto knife. Or well, I guess any craft knife. Just be careful to not cut too far. probably need a new blade on this. Okay. And then um, if you wanted to, you can use fry check on these slits. I generally don't. All right, and you will want two of the same halves of your magnetic snaps. It doesn't matter male or female, which side you use. Um, it's more like an innie and an Audi, so I'm using like the innie side, which is the side that has the magnet in it. It just does, it doesn't really matter. I would just make sure you use the same um, half of the snap in each of the parts right here so that they match. I like to press my prongs open, which I will here because it reduces bulk. Um, but on the connectors, I will press my prongs to the center because um, then it fits better within the connector. All right, now we're going to take the lining front slip pocket, place that right sides together with the exterior front slip pocket. Pin the, or clip those together along the top edge. And then we're going to sew them together using a one half inch seam allowance. All right, we're going to press these now so that they're wrong sides together. All right, and then we're going to top stitch along the top of the top only using an eighth of an inch seam allowance. I do want to make sure that my pink lining is not peeking out. Or it could be cute, I guess, if it does.
Now we want our exterior front pocket main right side up and we will place the pocket on top also right side up and go ahead and clip that in place. And then we're going to sew this together using a quarter inch seam allowance, kind of a basting stitch. Um, so you can switch to a longer stitch length for any of the basting stitches. I generally just leave it at five. Um, I would also like to mention that if your sewing machine doesn't handle the bulk well, um, when you cut the fleece to adhere to the pieces that have it, um, you can cut the seam allowance off of those pieces before you fuse it in place, um, and that can really help minimize bulk. All right, so we're going to set this pocket aside now. We're going to start with the exterior pocket gusset top. And we want our 17 and 3 quarter inch length zipper. So if you don't purchase zipper by the yard, I would recommend purchasing zippers that are a little bit longer and cutting them down. Um, because you're not going to find a zipper that is 17 and 3 quarters of an inch long. So we want to make sure that the zipper is closing toward the right. And we're going to place it right side down. Matching the top edge of the um, pocket gusset top. We only have one of these and it is an exterior piece. I did label it as ex exterior in the pattern um, just because I felt that it's easier to identify which piece you're looking for when it says if it's lining or exterior, even if there is only lining or only exterior of that specific piece. switch back to my zipper foot and I'm going to sew this in place using a 3 8 inch seam allowance. As we did before, you can move the zipper pull out of the way when you get near it but always do that with your needle in the down position. We're going to press the 
top, the exterior pocket gusset top away from the zipper, but we're not going to top stitch it at this point. All right, we're going to flip this over so we're looking at the wrong side now. We want to measure a marker line that's three quarters of an inch up from the long raw edge. And I'm just marking this with a regular um, ballpoint pen. And then we're going to fold the raw edge to the line that we just marked and press that well. Um, I'm just going to use double-sided tape and it doesn't matter how you want to do this. If you use tape, that's fine. If you want to iron it, that's also fine. I find that I use my tape for a lot um, and if this gums up your needle at all which it can be known to do that um, you can just wipe it down with like a little alcohol swab or a little alcohol pad I guess and it just comes right off the needle Again, you could also use glue stick for this. Um, and then you can actually set the glue with the iron, which if I'm making clothing out of knit fabric, that's typically what I do is use um, an Elmer's glue stick to hold the seams in place and then iron them. And it really works well. All right, and then after that's pressed up, then we're going to fold it over one more time and bring it right to um, the stitching. So just match it right up to that stitching. And then when we top stitch this, we'll be catching the back at the same time we top stitch the front. So it's kind of binding for just the one side of the zipper. Now we're going to flip over from the front side and we're going to top stitch using a 1 8 inch seam allowance.
Okay, make sure that um, the fabric was caught on the back as well. Now, we are going to fold. This is the pocket gusset bottom and we're going to fold it right sides together around the pocket gusset top and zipper. So we just want the end to match up like that. And I'm going to sew that together using a one half inch seam allowance. All right, and I'm going to repeat that to enclose the other end of the pocket gusset top and zipper inside of the pocket gusset bottom. All right, and again, we'll use a one half inch seam allowance here. Alright, so then you kind of pull the pocket gusset top and zipper out of the pocket gusset bottom and you have a loop like this. We want to fold the pocket gusset bottom wrong sides together in half and we're going to press that. Okay, so now we have this. We want to top stitch beneath the zipper on each side using a 1 8 inch seam allowance again. And then we're going to also baste Sorry, you want to back stitch there along the fold. There. Alright, and then I'm going to go ahead and baste these two sides of the pocket gusset bottom together using an eighth inch seam allowance. You can definitely use clips on these if you choose to. Hold it together. I probably also should have put my regular sewing foot back on. Alright, once I get here, I'm going to turn and top stitch. All right, now we want to mark the centers. And I'm going to use my chalk pencil for marking centers. Um, a lot of times I will clip into the seam allowance, but here I have the folded edge, which I do not want to clip into at all. And I have the zipper, which I also do not want to clip into. So I'm just going to mark my centers with the chalk pencil. And 
and I just mark on both sides so that way you can see the centers no matter what piece you're working on. All right, and then bring the top and bottom centers together and mark the centers on the side, which should be just under, just beneath the seam allowance um, between the pocket gusset top and pocket gusset bottom. All right, now we want the exterior front pocket main. We wanna mark the centers on this as well, which you can use your um, pattern piece to do so, or if you just fold it in half and kind of finger press, you find the centers and then mark them with your chalk pencil. There are more trains today than ever, I swear. All right, now we're going to attach the pocket gusset to this, yeah. Okay, so we want to flip the pocket gusset so that it's, um, the right side is inside the circle and the wrong side is outside of the circle. First, we're going to match the centers up And you'll clip those in place. And I do like to sew gussets on using um, my zipper foot. And this will be a 3 8 inch seam allowance here. So what you can do to help this lay nicely is just around the curves at the bottom only, clip about one quarter of an inch into the gusset. And that should help it to lay nicely. So the only thing is that when you do the top part, the top portion of this, you do not want to trim into your um, zipper tape because that will cause your tape to fray and it will pull out of the seams. You never, ever, ever want to clip into the zipper tape.
Um, and I do like to keep the zipper tape zipped together during this part because I think, and I'm not 100% sure, but I feel like if you unzip it and then sew all of this with it unzipped, it can get kind of wonky. So you'll just take your time as you sew around the zipper portion to make sure that you're not sewing any um, creases or anything into the zipper tape. So once that's all pinned in place, I'm going to start at the bottom center and I'm going to sew this together using a 3 8 inch seam allowance. If you need to, a stiletto can be a handy tool for sewing around curves to hold everything in place. I've also used, for years and years, I used a mini screwdriver. So really just anything small though that you can get close to the needle to hold things in place and you don't have to worry about um, sewing your fingers. But a stiletto is a fantastic tool. Um, mine is a stiletto seam ripper combo that I got from Hannah Woodworking. And I take it nice and slow around the curves just to make sure I maintain that 3 8 inch seam allowance. And that my curves are nice and rounded. I'm just moving the zipper pull out of the way as I get to it. Just take your time here, make sure you are not sewing any creases into the zipper tape. Sometimes I sew one stitch and then lift up my presser foot and readjust.
check it to make sure it looks decent. Um, looks really good. All right, so um, somebody, one of my testers did mention that this part is easier to do if you unzip the zipper. So go ahead and do that and kind of just scooch that part out of the way. We are now going to take the lining front pocket main, place it right sides together with the exterior front pocket main, sandwiching the whole gusset in between the two pieces. And we are just going to clip this together all the way around. Um, and I will sew with the exterior side up so that I can sew directly over my stitching from the last step. So I just keep my clips, keep that in mind when you're placing your clips because personally, um, I like my clips to be going the same way that I'll be sewing. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if that makes sense. All these, the flat side, I like to be on the bottom. Again, you have to be a little careful um, around the top corners of the zipper. But do not trim into the zipper tape at all. All right, so that's completely clipped. The only thing here is that we wanna keep a turning hole along the bottom edge. So I have it marked as four inches, but four or five is fine either way. Um, it's helpful to mark that out. My main thing is to keep it along a straight edge so that you're not going up into the curves at all. So we're just going to start sewing at one of the marks. Make sure you back stitch well. And you want to stitch over your stitching from the previous step. Again, take your time around the corners. you need to move your zipper pull out of the way to sew past it, you can. Just kind of feel around for where it's at. And then 
be careful as you sew the top corner with the zipper that you're not sewing through your zipper teeth. So you can feel, even though you can't see, you can feel where they're at. And I find it helpful to poke in there with my stiletto to make sure that the teeth are moved out of the way and then kind of lift the piece up around the curve so that way the zipper tape can fall in place how it wants to. You know, I don't know if that makes sense. Since you can't clip into it, it doesn't really lay flat. So it's kind of curving and that just helps it to sew nicely. here. Push the teeth out of the way. All right, now be careful not, do not trim along your opening and do not trim the top corners where the zippers are located. But I do trim around the bottom, specifically around the bottom corner so that they turn nicely. And then kind of up the side, but stop before you get to where the zipper is. If you want to trim away some of your fabric around where the zipper is, that's fine. Um, just don't trim the actual zipper tape at all. So if that makes sense, you can pull this back. and trim away that, um, the exterior and the fleece, which could help minimize bulk for sure. Trimming the fleece out, just be careful not to cut your zipper tape at all. And then you can do the same with the lining as well. Got a little bit of a hack job here. Good 
think nobody sees the inside, huh? All right. So now we'll pull this right side out through the hole in the bottom. I would definitely say to leave a five inch hole. definitely use your turning tool chopstick or whatever for this to push the corners and seams out nicely all right so then we're going to press this well and right here at the seam I'm going to just turn or at the opening I'm sorry I'm going to turn the lining inside by three-eighths of an inch and we'll just press it nice and flat and then we're going to top stitch all the way around this to which will close the hole and make the whole thing lay nice and flat. All right, when it comes to pressing this, be careful not to touch your vinyl. Um, and I am actually going to use a piece of tape along this opening to just hold it closed. So parts of this can get pretty thick, especially if you have fleece. Um, so you may want to cut the fleece out of your seam allowance if you're worried about bulk. And um, one of my testers suggested, and I actually added it to the pattern, that if sewing through the thickness is an issue for your sewing machine, Instead of top stitching all the way around the pocket, she just top stitched along the bottom and then around the top edge to help the zipper lay nicely. So that is definitely an option. So now I'm going to flip this, flip the gusset up like that. And I'm just going to top stitch all the way around the pocket using a 1 8 inch seam allowance.
All right. Once that is all sewn in place, then we can get ready to baste it to the exterior. Ah. First, we're going to make a slip pocket. All right, now we're going to take two of the lining interior slip slash zipper pocket pieces and place them right sides together. We will use clips to clip all four edges together. All right, and then we turn this right side out through an opening along the bottom edge. So if you want to mark an opening, um, I have it listed as at least four inches. <clears throat> All right, we're going to sew this together using a one half inch seam allowance. And I do still have my um, zipper foot on, not because I need it for this stuff, but I will need it when I attach the front pocket to the main panel. So I just didn't take it off. All right, and then we're going to clip the corners. You can trim the seam allowance down all the way around if you want to, which will help to reduce bulk, but do not trim along the opening. <clears throat> All right, we're going to turn this right side out through the hole.
and I will run the tip of the stick along each of the seams also to push them out completely. <clears throat> and then we're going to turn the opening inside by one half inch and I will press this whole thing nice and flat once it's completely turned out. <clears throat> wow, this is a lot harder than it needs to be. Alright, now I'm going to press this nice and flat. Alright, now we'll go ahead and top stitch the top seam. The open edge is along the bottom, um, and we're not going to sew that right now. It will get sewn closed when we sew it onto the bag. Okay, and if you want to, you can put a piece of um, double-sided tape inside the opening here to keep it closed. Um, I'm not going to. All right, so here we want to take one of the exterior main panels. Okay, we're going to use the main panel pattern piece to mark the placement of the front pocket. So what I have done, you can just cut this out and then you but then you'd need to reprint the main panel pattern piece next time you're going to use it. All right, and then I'm just marking right along here. that over. And mark this side as well. All right, and then it's easy enough to connect the lines. All right, this pocket, we want to place it three and a half inches up from the bottom and centered. So I'm going to fold this in half to find the center. And then I'm going to fold this in half to find the center. Okay. 
And we can also use the pattern piece to mark that out. All right, now we want three and a half inches up from the bottom straight edge. And centered. All right, and the pocket will go right here. I'm going to use some of our double-sided tape. And I'm just going to put it right along the very edge <clears throat> so that way it will not be exposed on the inside of the pocket. You could also pin this in place, but the waterproof canvas, um, when you pin through it, the holes will stay there. I don't know that you would really see it much from the like fabric side. I just don't like to pin, honestly. All right, so three and a half inches up from the bottom and centered. So I'm just, I see the center line here and I'm matching it up with the center line that I drew on the main panel. And then we'll top stitch this on all the way around using a 1 8 inch seam allowance. Make sure that you back stitch at the top. Um, so that the pocket doesn't come unstitched. All right, and right here, if you desire, um, you can sew another line of stitching down here. So you could put it over here so that this would be like a nice place to put a couple of pens um, and then have a wider pocket for a phone or you can leave it open. I'm going to leave mine. Um, I'm going to erase the center lines that I marked. All right, I'm leaving part of it right there, which will help me when I line up my pocket. All right, so now we're going to take this pocket and place it on here. I am, again, going to use my double-sided tape for this. 
and I only place it along the straight edges in the corners I'll kind of um, guide into place as I sew. So while this tape is not 100% necessary, it is very, very helpful and I strongly recommend it. All right, right here, make sure that you have the top of the pocket at the right side. All right, I'm matching up my center marks along the bottom. And just stick that down onto the tape. Do the same along the top. And this can seem a little bit hard to line up, but once it's um, sewn on, once you're sewing it on, it, it falls into place a little easier. Should mark the sides, the center along the side. I'm going to do it like this. Ah, the center, okay, you need to mark the center of, not the side. We need to mark the center of this, which is actually down a little bit further. That makes more sense. Okay. Where once the front pocket's done, the rest of it is not quite as hard.
All right, so then we're going to sew this on very carefully using an eighth of an inch seam allowance. I'm just going to start in the bottom center. And I'm going to just take my time. I'll use my stiletto. difficult with the curves, you know, when you can't clip into them, which you can't clip into this since it's like a finished edge. So just really take it like one stitch at a time. On this part, I think the top edge is actually easier to attach than the bottom edge when you unzip the zipper anyway.
I'll go over the whole bag with a um, damp cloth when I'm finished. Make sure I get all the marks off. Um, and if you have some tape that's exposed in there, you can kind of just pick it out a little bit, but okay. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and mark one and three eighths of an inch um, from each side of the flap, just along this bottom portion of the flap. All right, we're going to use double-sided tape. And I'm just going to go ahead and put this on all four pieces that we're using for the buckles. Well, I guess all six of them are actually for the buckles, but the part of the buckle that's attached to the top. No. Oh. One more. All right, so I'm just going to line this up so that the right side of the buckle piece is lined up to the left of that line. And then I'll repeat that to put one to the right of the line on the left side. And I'm just lining these up so that the top of this piece is lined up with the top stitching along the top of this bottom panel, um, the flap front bottom. All right, and if you see all my I just adjusted the pattern piece so before it comes out I needed to make this longer um, so that it will accommodate multiple buckle sizes. Um, so I seam ripped the ones that I had on off. So then you're going to want to mark your line on the back also. Mine is already marked. And line up the bottom part of this buckle piece. And then the top of it should be directly behind the top that's already taped on. All right, so once those are secured in place, we're going to sew them on. If you look at step number 31, um, where these are attached, there are directions showing you the order to go in. So you'll go 
at the bottom of the square portion. That way, up, over, down, and then around the bottom of this, and then back across the center. And all of that is done with a 1 8 inch seam allowance. And I just take this part nice and slow to make sure that my stitches stay even. Um, always stop with the needle in the down position to rotate at the corner. I definitely should have swapped back out to my regular presser foot. I'm just going to make this work. Once I reach that first line of stitching, I'm just going to sew directly across it. And then you can go ahead and back stitch across it as well. And just really lock those stitches in place. Keep that same stitch order on the other connector. So if you see me, when I get to the end of a line of sewing and I kind of hand crank my needle down part way, and then I stop and lift up my presser foot, I'm adjusting it so that my line of stitching ends where I want it to, which is exactly one eighth of an inch away from the side of the piece. Okay, be careful right here because you are sewing over the end of that zipper.
All right, so once these are both sewn in place, um, you'll punch holes for the buckles. So you can use your pattern piece um, for the buckle piece. And this is the old piece um, where I had it shorter. So disregard that. I'm only going to use this top hole um, just because I know that's the one I'm going to buckle it in. And I'm not going to be using the eyelets in my bag. Um, so if you are using eyelets and you want them for decorative purposes, um, you can go ahead and add the second or even more um, holes and then put the eyelets in those. I unfortunately don't have the right size eyelets that go with my dye that are also um, matte black. So I'm just going to skip those. So I use a leather hole punch for punching my holes. And then also, if you desire, um, you can put a rivet in the center of each of these. So I think I will go ahead and do that. So just locate the center. I actually, So these are one and a quarter at the top, so it's five eighths of an inch from the bottom. I'm just going to make sure those are even before I punch holes in this. All right, now we will make the bottom part of our buckle. Um, so we are going to use two tabs and the two other buckle 
pieces. Um, each of these tabs, we're just going to top stitch along one straight edge. And that's a 1 8 inch seam allowance. And this is really, this top stitch is just for um, aesthetics. It serves no purpose. Okay, now we are going to install the magnetic snap in each one of these pieces. Um, I have a center mark on this. Um, I will actually include that mark on the pattern piece in the pattern as well so that you can easily find the center for rivets or for installing these snaps. Now we'll use the washers. To mark the prong placement. All right, and then carefully make a slit on each of those marks. And you can back this with um, a scrap of Decoville light if you feel like your vinyl needs a little more um, structure to hold the snap in. Go ahead and Pop a snap through each of these. All right, and I should have also mentioned, um, first I'm closing these snaps toward the center so that it can be enclosed um, inside of the piece here. Um, I should have mentioned to make sure that these are centered over the magnetic snaps on the bag. I checked mine earlier and they did match. So just before you sew those in place, make sure that when your flap is centered over the front pocket, that each of these are centered over one of the magnetic snaps on your bag. I forgot the washer. I am really struggling. So right now, I usually do all of my video filming on the weekends. Um, and it is Tuesday. And I already worked however many hours today. More than eight. I generally work hmm, like nine and a half hours a day. Um, so yeah, I was already at work for nine and a half hours today. Came home, cooked dinner, and now this. So, okay. Now, you want to back each of these with one of the tabs. And I'm just going to use small pieces of tape. I think my uh, 
magnet could have been a little bit better centered. I'm going to also blame that on it being Tuesday and I'm tired. Um, you know, on second thought, when you put tape here, you want to only put it along the very, very edge because we're going to be sliding the tab through this. So I would only put it there and there if needed. Or you can just hold the pieces together or use um, clips. All right, and I want to place this on here with the top stitched piece at the top. All right, and right now we're going to top stitch only down the two sides. I am going to switch back to my zipper foot for this, though, so that I can sew next to the um, magnetic snap. All right, so you just want to sew directly down each side. And each of these lines of stitching that you make on these, you want to back stitch at the start and stop since it is only that one line of sewing. Um, and you can also use a lighter to singe the ends of your threads. Um, it kind of melts them and holds, will hold in place better. There's also an alternative in the pattern if you don't want to make the buckles. Um, there are alternative pieces that you can use. All right, so now I need to punch the hole for my buckle, which I should have pre-marked, but it's going to be the top hole on the strap piece, or the buckle piece. I want to put this on, okay, put this through the top, put the little thing, I don't know what you call that part, through the hole, and then we're going to slide this part inside of the two pieces here. Tweezers would be helpful for this. All right, and just pull it so that it's nice and tight. So your finished piece right now should look like this. You have your magnetic snap on the back. Your buckle is pointing up when all of this is pointing down. And that's the closed position of the buckle. <clears throat> now we're going to top stitch just right here along the bottom seam of that only. And that's again a 1 8 inch seam allowance. and then we're going to trim this little tail off so that it's even with the bottom piece. And then if you 
choose to use edge coat on your project, you can go ahead and put some edge coat there. Okay, so once that piece is sewn up, you will slide this onto your buckle piece. It's a little bit tight, but get that through the hole and then feed that back down through the bottom of the buckle and that part is completed and then your strap your snap is on the back and we'll go ahead and do that with the other piece So I know this pattern is a little more difficult, but I think a lot of it is just time consuming. And if you take it step by step, it's hopefully not completely hard. It just takes a while to make. But I'm really pleased with how the buckle looks. So I'm placing this again with the stitching on the little tab at the top and then I'll top stitch the two sides of this I find it easier to top stitch with the magnet facing up And if your stitching doesn't look super perfect on this part, most of it's covered up um, by the tab part or the tail part, I guess, of the buckle piece. So this with the tail part facing wrong way up and the magnet at the bottom and your buckle is facing the correct way with the prong going up, you want to slide this through the top part. Slide the prong through the hole and then slide this back down through the bottom part and then feed it through behind the tab. And it's definitely easier if you fold it like that. It gives it a little more, uh, I don't know. All right, pull that through so it's nice and tight and then go ahead and top stitch at the bottom of this side. trim that tail off. And also, since we won't actually ever be using the buckles on these, um, at this point, if you wanted to like glue them on, you can do that. And it is a little bit tough to get that on at first, but once you get it, I don't think it's going to like fall off. So I don't think they really need to be glued. They're pretty tight.
So then, because it will depend on how tight you pull this, when, when the flap is in place, we should be sewing it about half an inch up. So just make sure that if you lay your flap snapped in place so that about half an inch is folded down, that everything fits. And it does. So I'm going to All right, and this is where we had the opening, which I taped closed. We're going to place this centered and along the top of that pocket. So I'm going, I use my tape a lot. On the right side of the flap, I'm just going to put a row of tape right at the edge. So if you notice that your magnets are down a little bit further, then you can sew this part up a little bit higher. And you do want to make sure this is centered, so I probably should have like pre-marked my center. My center is marked on there. And I just folded it on here, so. Okay, and I'm just going to stick that down. This can be directly along the top of this pocket. I'm going to swap back to my other foot. Top stitch this using a 1 8 inch seam allowance first. And you definitely want to make sure that you back stitch really well at the start and stop of this because you don't, the flap is going to be like those are stress points, I guess. And then one more line, um, about half an inch up, half, half inch away from the first line. Um, so, do I want to eyeball that? I think I'm going to actually measure it because um, I'm not always a good eyeballer. So I'm just going to make some marks that are half inch up from that first line and then I'll just connect them. Magnets should clip in place. I'm 
All right, oh, let's go on to what's next. All right, so we're going to get the back of the bag assembled. All right, so we have a 36 inch length of webbing and we have a strap adjuster. So we are going to fold the webbing over the center bar and then fold down about an inch to the back. Um, and I did make sure to melt the ends of my webbing with a lighter when I cut it. That does not work on cotton webbing. Um, so you may want to use spray check or I've seen people sew a little bit of leather over the end and that is cute. So we're just going to now so one line of stitching as close to the hardware as possible. And I just back stitch all the way across. I feel like my bobbin could be running out at any time, but it's the same bobbin so far for the whole bag. All right, and then one more line closer to the end of the webbing. Now we want to take the strap or the clip and slide it over the end of our webbing and then slide this end of the webbing back up over the adjuster and pull it. All right, so then you should have this and then just make sure that your strap is adjustable. All right, in these pieces, you'll place wrong sides together Nope, right sides together. Um, and we're just going to clip around them. This you want to lay directly down the center. This looks like a weird pair of underwear. That uncomfortable one made out of uh, canvas. Okay. So. Make sure that your strap end extends about half an inch past the end of the fabric and you want to make sure that it's centered. And then you can just go ahead and clip the ends of that in place and then just make sure the rest of it stays out of the seam allowance. finger hurts today. All right, so now I'm going to sew down one side across the bottom and I'll probably backstitch across this a couple times and then back up the other side. And this is all using a half inch seam allowance. Hopefully I'm not getting my head in half of the video because 
I still have not been using this camera angle for that long. And I feel like when I watch it back, a lot of the time my head is in the video. So it's definitely not intentional. But it is truly difficult to sew um, and not get close to it. Now we're going to trim the seam allowance along the edges only, or the sides. Um, do not trim the bottom where the webbing is. Specifically the webbing not to trim, but if you trim the fabric there that would be okay. Um, I will trim the corners of my fabric. All right, now we're going to turn this right side out. All right, and I'm, I will use my uh, tool to poke the corners out. to um, press this nice and flat. All right, so once that's pressed, we're going to top stitch using a 1 8 inch seam allowance. Alright, and then we're going to top stitch one more time 
um, across the strap end just to help really hold it in there. Okay, so let's go ahead and make the other connectors for the bottom. So we have two of the five inch lengths of webbing and two D-rings. So I'm just going to slide a D-ring onto this, match the two short ends, and then top stitch as close to the D-ring as I can. And I'll probably stitch across this a few times. Just to make sure it's really secure. And we'll repeat that with the other one. Now we'll take our exterior main panel that does not have the front pocket attached. We are going to measure two inches up from the bottom of each side. So we want it to be from the straight edge. So I'll actually use a wider ruler. Um, and if you like these rulers that I have, they're so cute and sparkly and rainbow. Um, they are from mormino.com. I feel like pretty sewing tools makes the whole process a little more fun. All right, so these you want to place in this direction. And I'm going to make sure half an inch of this connector is hanging off past the edge of my fabric and then I'm going to baste it on using a quarter inch seam allowance. Keep that with the other side. That was probably a little overkill. All right, and then here, let's go ahead and find the top center. And we'll just go ahead and mark the bottom center as well.
and let's mark the side centers while we're at it. All right, and then we're going to find the center of this strap piece. Mark that. All right, and now we're going to place this on right side up. So look at your buckle and make sure that your buckle is facing um, up. And then line up your centers. And then we're going to base this in place using a quarter inch seam allowance as well. So now I'm going to install half of the remaining magnetic snap into one of the tabs. And I don't generally call out um, which side of the snap that you install in any given piece because it doesn't truly matter. Mark the center with a piece that was gonna be part of the pattern, and now it's not, but I will make sure that you have something to mark the center with. I don't wanna use that. I think I should not be sewing when I'm this tired. I keep doing dumb things. I already stabbed my in the finger with a stiletto once tonight. It was bleeding. Now I'm going to use some tape cool. all right and we want to here stick about half an inch or so of the other connector webbing piece onto this tab and it's centered from left to right and then we'll place the other tab wrong sides together with that one with the webbing sandwiched in between. All right, so right now we have this. I'm going to switch back out to my zipper foot. All right, and then I'm just going to top stitch all the way around this using an eighth of an inch seam allowance again.
All right, so then we have this tab. Now we're going to take a lining interior slip pocket. All right, we're going to find the center. And then measure three quarters of an inch from the top. We're going to go ahead and use the washer to mark the placement for the other interior or the other magnetic snap half. All right, and then this one for sure, since it's in not vinyl, if you want to use a scrap of fusible fleece that you have or Decoville light or something on the back, that is recommended. And then I'm going to push the prongs out on this piece. All right, now place these right sides together, matching up the top edge. to sew this together using a quarter inch seam allowance. Alright, and I think I'm actually going to move that snap down a little bit so it's easier to sew next to not impossible by any means and if you're sewing around these tabs then you'd be able to but I think it would be helpful to move it down one inch from the top instead all right now I'm going to press this um, so they're wrong sides together be careful not to hold the iron on your magnet for too long because it can demagnetize it. All right, now we're going to top stitch this using a 1 8 inch seam allowance. I'm definitely moving this now. Alright, now take one of the lining main panels and place this right sides together, matching up the bottom edge, the corners, and the sides. to base this in place using a quarter inch seam allowance.
All right, once that's basted in place, go ahead and clip the snap on and then make sure the top of this is centered and baste that in place using a quarter inch seam allowance. All right, for the interior zipper pocket, we are going to measure and mark a box on the wrong side of one of the interior slip pockets that is seven inches wide and half an inch tall and one inch down from the top. So, let's see, we want it to be centered and this ruler is not quite as wide as the pocket. So I just marked the center. All right, and seven inches wide, we'll stop one inch from each end. All right, and then we'll draw a second line, half an inch down from the first line. going to take this panel and place it right sides together with the lining main and we want to be two inches down from the top. All right, so let me mark the center of this piece and I'm just going to finger press that to mark the center. two inches down from the top. All right, so right there. And then we're just going to, cool. I need to not uh, move it. And obviously you can uh, pin this in place or put some clips on here somehow like the longer clips would work so I'm just going to sew now directly over this box trying not to move this pocket too much I moved it plenty let me make sure it's still lined up. Do not do what I'm doing. Use pins. Stop with your needle down at the corner and rotate so it's the side. Stop with your needle down at the next corner.
All right, now we want to cut directly down the center of this box. When you get to the end, about half an inch away from the end, you'll stop and um, cut at an angle to each of the corners. So then we're going to turn this pocket right side out through this hole. I mean, I guess wrong sides together. You're pulling this pocket panel wrong sides together with the lining main. Wow, it is super, super windy outside. That's really loud. All right, so I'm going to go press this flat. Okay, the pocket's pressed as flat as I can get it. Um, I'm going to use some of my eighth inch double-sided tape. And I'm just going to place a line of it along the top and bottom of the opening. Now we want to line the zipper up in the center of the opening. So generally I take the paper off of half of the tape first, not all of it. Some days if I can do something wrong I definitely will. So once you have that centered and you're happy with the placement, um, go ahead and top stitch around this using a 1 8 inch seam allowance.
kind of wish I was using coordinating thread on this pink fabric. I guess the black doesn't look horrible, but... Now we're going to take the other interior zip pocket and place it right sides together with that one. And we're just going to whip the sides and the top together. Now we're going to sew this together using a half inch seam allowance and make sure you back stitch because we're going to be turning the entire bag right side out through this pocket at the end and we're leaving the bottom um, open for turning. Now I'm going to trim the seam allowance down from the sides of this pocket only. I mean, you could trim the top if you want, but it doesn't matter. Okay. Now we want to measure and mark the centers of this lining panel. So I'm just going to fold that in half. And then fold it in half this way. All right, we're going to set this aside. And now we want our gusset pieces. So we've got an exterior bottom, a lining bottom, and then there's two exterior tops and two lining tops. So I do have fleece fused to these, but I kept it out of the seam allowance along the zipper. So I'm going to take my zipper that has two pulls attached and place it right sides together with the top exterior, I'm sorry, what's it called? Exterior main gusset top. 
and I'm just going to clip that together. And I do still have the zipper foot on my machine. So keep in mind, I guess that I might not always say when you should have your zipper foot or when you should have your regular foot, but you, you'll want to switch out throughout the pattern to your zipper foot. Alright, we're going to base this in place using a quarter inch seam allowance. Alright, now we're going to take a lining panel and place it right side down on top of the exterior and clip that in place. All right, now we're going to sew that together using a 3 8 inch seam allowance. When we come across the zipper poles, we'll have to move them out of the way. All right, now we want to press the two panels wrong sides together and away from the zipper. And this is one of those situations where you could wait um, 
to install your zipper pulls until you had this sewn together if you wanted to. Um, and then you would just have a nice flat zipper in there. Let me press this. All right, so now we're going to top stitch this using a 1 8 inch seam allowance. And I'm just going to make sure the whole time that both panels are pulled away from the zipper completely. I feel like even though I iron it, um, the waterproof canvas doesn't necessarily crease that well when you iron it. So. Alright, so we've got one side sewn on, and now we're going to repeat that process to attach the top gussets to the other side. So this one is right sides down, um, on top of the zipper that's facing up. So actually, I think I'll do it this way. Let's go ahead and top stitch this. Now we're going to sew this side in place using a quarter inch seam allowance. Yep, that's three eighths. All right, now we're placing the lining, the other lining top gusset, gusset top, whatever it's called, right sides together. No. Yes, right sides together with whatever. <laughs> it's right sides together with the other lining gusset that's already attached. It's been a long day. If you're watching this video, then congratulations to you for making it this long too. All right, so we're going to sew this in place using a 3 8 inch seam allowance.
All right, now I'm going to press these wrong sides together as well, and then we'll top stitch them. All right, and now we're going to top stitch this side, also using an eighth inch seam allowance. All right, top, uh, okay, so now we are going to take the handle pieces. So we have two handle accent pieces and then we have two tabs. We are going to take the um, 10 inch piece of webbing I'm just going to measure quick and find the center here. Hmm. All right, and then each of these are, I think, six inches long. Yes. So I'm going to mark the center on that as well. So I'm going to cut some of my tape and place it on the back of one of the handle accents. All right, and I want to going to line the center up with the center here and make sure that it's also centered um, this way. So there should be about an eighth of an inch on each side of the webbing of the handle accent piece. and take the other one on.
going to place that wrong sides together with the handle accent piece that's already attached and just make sure all the edges line up. All right, and then we're going to top stitch all the way around this using um, a 1 8 inch seam allowance. I'm going to start on the short end and I'll stitch across, back stitch, and then stitch across again. Um, and we'll do, you know, I'm actually not going to do that. I'm going to sew across once and then I'll do the back stitching when I finish. But we will back stitch on the other end when we go across the end of it just to make sure the webbing is secure. I didn't do what I said I was going to do either. So, you might want to back stitch across this an extra time. That was my intention. And then I didn't do it anyway. All right, now on the top of the zipper gusset, or whatever we call this piece, we're going to fold it in half and find the center. Okay, so we'll go ahead and mark the line at the center. Okay, and then from that center mark, we want to measure four inches over to each side. All right, and we will also need the center mark when we um, assemble the whole bag. So right now, I'm going to take some tape. And place it at the ends of the webbing. And now we'll place this so it is an eighth of an inch away from the stitching. And you want to be pretty precise about this so that your handle doesn't end up getting caught um, in when you attach the gusset to the main panels. All right, so this will be like that. The end of the webbing is matched up with each of those lines you just marked. 
You want to make sure that your lining is folded back out of the way. And we're just going to sew directly along the end. of the webbing back up a couple of stitches Repeat that on the other side. Again, make sure your lining is folded back out of the way. Now, we want to take our two tab pieces and our tape. And we are going to place the tape on the back. And then we want to make sure that this is centered over the end of the strap and the side of the tab should be even with the top stitching along the zipper. So I'm just making that line here in the center of the tab by folding it to find the center and that's where I'm placing it. All right, and then we'll just top stitch around the tab using a 1 8 inch seam allowance again. And make sure your lining is still pulled back out of the way. You really could sew through the lining if you wanted to. It it won't hurt anything, just the stitches would be visible inside. And here you can either back stitch at the start and stop or you can pull your threads to the back and tie them off. I think I'm just going to back stitch a couple stitches. All right, and then we'll repeat that to sew the other tab on.
fold the lining back over. And now we are going to baste uh, the bottom panels. I'm going to sew my tag here. All right, so these are my tags that I got from Heartwood and Hyde. So find the center of that kind of. I have a little template um, that they also sell that I got for properly placing my tags. I like guess. back of my tag, some more tape. Alright, now I'm just going to top stitch around this, also using a 1 8 inch seam allowance. And for this, I think I will tie this threads off in the back. And these are cork labels. Um, and they also sell leather and vinyl. Um, so I have several colors in leather and then I got black cork that has um, like colored printing on it and my leather ones are etched or I think that's what it's called but they're super amazing custom um, she runs samples to make sure that your tags look perfect so highly recommend them if you're in the market for custom tags. All right, so I'm going to pull my threads to the back. Easier said than done because I sewed right through um, the stitching. Yeah. Anyway, now I'm just going to tie this in a knot. And then you can put like a dab of glue on that to make sure that the knot stays. Or you can use a lighter as long as you're using like a polyester thread to sear or singe the ends and then it stays so pretty all right now let's place place the top gusset panels right sides down or exterior sides i guess together and then lining sides together so we want to match up both so I'm just going to place that here and I'll kind of clip those two together on the side so that they stay and then place the lining over as well and then sew that together. All right, now I'm going to sew this together using a half inch seam allowance. All 
right, now I'm going to do the same thing here. So we're just kind of sliding the other end of the top gussets down to line them up with the other end of the bottom gussets. We're going to sew this end together, also using a half inch seam allowance. Now we're going to flip this so that the bottom gussets are wrong sides together and away from the top gussets and we're going to top stitch using an eighth inch seam allowance beneath each of these seams. All right, now we are going to baste the sides of the top gussets and the sides of the bottom gussets together. So we're really just sewing all the way around in a giant loop using a quarter inch seam allowance. And you can clip this together or pin it together if you need to. top stitcher on the other side. We're so close to being done.
All right, let's mark centers here. Um, we have the center marked there already. So if we just fold this in half, bringing the sides together, the side seams. Mark the center of this side. And the center of the bottom. and then the center of the sides, which is not where the seam is, so make sure you actually measure this. So I'm just matching up the centers of the top and bottom. Oh, and you can definitely cut into the seam allowance with your snips if you want to, to mark centers here. I don't know why, I guess I'm not. I didn't before because there was zipper in the way. I didn't want to clip into my zippers, obviously. When all those centers are marked, now front and the lining, or no, yeah, the gusset. Okay, so we want to match the side, the handle is on this side of the gusset, so we want to match the other side to the front panel. So first we're just going to line up and match it at the center marks. right side together and we're going to use a, a billion clips for this. All right, let's just go around and mark all the center or match up all the centers. to unzip your front, front pocket zipper to just slide the zipper out of the way. Um, my zipper pulls are these rings and they kind of get in the way. All right, match the other side centers. And then we're going to take our scissors and 
just clip into um, where the curves will be by about a quarter of an inch. And that should help this to match up decently. And you may still have to ease around the corners just a little bit. Whatever you do here, just make sure that you don't trim or clip more than half an inch in because your seam allowance will be at one half inch. And it's not a big deal if you cut through those basting stitches, since they are just basting stitches. For the most part, the layers will stay together. Um, if you use staples, this is probably a good time for that. I still have never tried that. I bought a small stapler for the, that purpose of stapling gussets and such, but I haven't tried it. Eyeball, make sure everything looks even. sew this together. So this will be um, half inch seam allowance all the way around. This is probably another part where you'll get use out of your stiletto if you have one. Um, and this also might be easier to use your zipper foot. So we'll see if I end up switching mine out. Let me get my stiletto ready.
take it nice and easy around the corners to make sure that you are not sewing any um, yeah, creases or whatever into your seam. Sometimes on curves I'll go like one stitch at a time and then kind of lift up my presser foot and adjust. Just definitely take your time. definitely helpful to do the adjusting with the needle in the down position. I'm just going to, I think my centers were not marked completely right because some of this feels a little bit weird. I'll adjust that just a little bit. And be careful with your stiletto if you have one because they will make you bleed because I stabbed myself in the thumb earlier this week and it definitely bled for a while. Maybe I'm at that point where I need to give the stapling a try I think because I feel like that would be easier here. Who's a fan of stapling? Leave me a comment and let me know. Is there a certain brand of stapler that you like to use? I just got like a super cheap small one, but I feel like I've seen people have preferences of ones that work better for bag, make, bag making.
check your seam. Alright, I think that's decent enough. Alright, so once that's all sewn on, we are going to unzip that zipper just because I think it makes it easier. Take the lining panel that has the um, slip pocket and we are going to match up the, all of the centers. And we're just going to pin this together all the way around. And we're placing this right sides together with the exterior main panel and the gussets just sandwiched in between and we're flattening it down inside. So we're making like a bag sandwich. We're going to leave an opening along the bottom of the lining when we sew this. Oh no, I'm over here breaking my clips. Just making sure that all the little pieces where I trimmed it into my seam allowance along the curve, um, that they're all not folded back or anything, that they're all being clipped in here in between the lining and exterior. All right, now, this is the bottom. We wanna leave a turning hole here. So you can go ahead and mark that if you want so that you don't forget. Make it as wide as you can. You don't wanna sew, or you don't wanna leave any of the corner parts open because that'll make things difficult for you later. And we are just going to sew directly over the previous line of stitching where we attach the gusset to the exterior and just feel around and make sure nothing weird is like caught in your seam. If it is, go ahead and take your stiletto or your finger or something and kind of just poke it in there and smooth things out. If your gusset feels like it's folded funny or something. You know, just go ahead and stick your finger in there and fix it.
So if you wanted to make this without having the, the added bulk from the fleece, um, I have this interfacing called, I think it's called Pixie Fuse Heavy. And it's like, it feels like a heavily starched um, woven fabric. And I feel like that would be like really great for giving this some extra shape and a little bit more body, but without making it really thick. All right, make sure that that all looks semi-decent. Um, we're going to trim the seam allowance. I'm not going to trim it along the turning hole and I'm not going to trim along the end of the webbing there. And the rest of it is getting trimmed down to about an eighth of an inch. And if you want to here, you can trim next to the webbing. Just don't cut the actual webbing itself. So let's go ahead and turn this all right side out. Just take your time. And I probably don't know if I can do this like out away from my body. It's easiest for me to turn things like in my lap. All right, so we have this all turned right side out. Um, I am changing the opening of that pocket or the opening along the bottom to be seven inches wide. Um, so I know I think I said six inches wide, but you'll want that to be seven inches wide. So I'm going to right now try to top stitch it close. You could hand stitch this um, using a ladder stitch, which if you if you um, Google that, you'll see what a ladder stitch is. Or at least that's what I'm going to attempt to do. So I'm just going to sew as close to the edge as I can along this part. Because you don't want to sew through the exterior of the bag at all. And with the thickness of the layers, if you are sewing just along the very edge of it, it should not go through the exterior at all. So this is like top stitch between these two using like one eighth of an inch or less seam allowance. So if you can just as close as you can to the edge and still catch both sides.
So check to make sure that you did not sew through the exterior, which I didn't. That looks fine. Um, probably not my straightest line of stitching I've ever sewn. All right, now we're going to place this. So we're going to unzip this zipper completely. And we're going to take the back exterior panel, just put the buckle down inside, make sure it's not in the edge. We're going to match up the centers. So just match all the centers first. This side will probably probably be a little bit easier to attach um, than the front because the zipper. Yeah, I don't know why really. Never mind. Um, this bag would also be perfect to bind the lining, lining if you want. Um, I'm hoping that one of my testers is going to make a video of that process. So if you prefer binding over doing this method, I, everybody's got their preferences. So um, it is easy. It would be easy to change this pattern to have binding though. You would just baste the lining and exterior front and back main panels together wrong sides together and then sew the binding on like this or sew the um gusset on like this and then just use binding around the seams so we're just attaching this the exact same way that we attached the front i clipped into the edge of the gusset just a little bit. <laughs> and that helps it to stretch around the curves nicely. Just make sure that you don't trim more than half an inch in. I try to stick with about a quarter of an inch. So if you trim right up to the basting stitches that are on this piece, then that should be good.
I'm just trying to smooth out this little part so I don't get any creases. All right, so starting from wherever, really, but the bottom center, we're going to sew this on using a half inch seam allowance. And we also are going to make sure that the sides of the handle are not being caught in the stitching here on the top part of the gusset. I shouldn't have just taken all the clips off of this.
going to, this doesn't look like it has any creases or anything in it, so I'm just going to check it from the exterior side by feel. All right, now here's our final bag sandwich. So unzip this zipper completely. We have this zipper unzipped completely. And we're going to place this lining panel right sides together with the lining panel that's attached and squish everything up in between and clip this um, lining panel to this exterior panel with the gusset in between just like we did before. Um, so it will just be kind of a giant bag sandwich. And yeah, just squish everything in there. And I'm going to sew it from the exterior side so that I can sew directly over my stitching. So I'm placing my clips that way. So this is the method, I guess, for if you don't like binding. I know a lot of people don't, a lot of people do. So it's all personal preference. If you like binding, then by all means, change this into a bound bag because it can definitely be done that way.
All right, now we have a giant bag sandwich. So as we sew around this, we wanna make sure that we don't sew through this pocket at all. All right, and you can start wherever you would like. And just squish it under there. Um, this also might be easier to use a zipper foot. And I'm just sewing directly along the stitching from, let's see, step number 65. I'm just back stitching over the ends of the connectors. This is definitely, I'm actually going to switch out to my zipper foot, that would help me.
All right, we're just going to trim the seam allowance now. I'm not going to trim the ends of my webbing. And I'm also not going to trim um, the end of the strap part because I just want a little bit of extra seam allowance there to help hold everything in the seam so that it doesn't pull out of the seam when you use it. And make sure you're not cutting through your uh, zipper pocket when you do this, the interior zipper pocket. Now, I'm going to pull everything right side out through the pocket. And I'm sorry that this will not be filmed because I have to do it in my lap. All right, the whole bag is turned right side out. And right now I'm going to pull the bottom of the interior zipper pocket out. And I'm going to turn the edge inside by about a quarter of an inch. And then you can press this, or I think I'm just going to put some clips on it. You turn it in by half an inch or whatever it's fine just turn the raw edges inside and then clip it and then we're just going to top stitch that closed along the folded edge And I'm just using an eighth of an inch seam allowance. And we're like done. Finally. Finally done. All right, so my thoughts now after sewing this, I think I'm going to completely omit the fleece. Um, it gives the bag nice structure, but it makes it very difficult to sew. So I think without the fleece, because we're already using heavy materials anyway, that we might just add one layer of woven interfacing to each of the exterior panels. Um, that will be listed in the pattern and I think that will be sufficient. Trim any loose threads that you have. And then you'll just clip your strap on whichever side you prefer to wear your crossbody and it's done. And I'll just give it a 
thorough pressing. And this is the Duncan Messenger Sling. So I hope you enjoy. This is an advanced pattern. So keep that in mind. Um, probably not best for beginners. Um, it is a little more difficult. And yeah, if you wanted to do this pattern but make it easier, you could always just leave off this whole entire front pocket and use the base parts only, the main panels and the main gusset. And then you have like just a rectangle sling bag without all of this. So that's one way to make it more beginner friendly. So um, let me know what you think in the comments and thanks for watching.